Some countries are harder to visit than others. Of course, this can depend on what kind of passport you carry, but regardless of your nationality, some countries just do not make themselves easy to visit. This video is also coming from the perspective of someone who holds an American passport, so the difficulties I faced getting certain visas and traveling in different areas of the world could be more or less challenging for people who hold different kinds of passports. Also, great news guys, we got Skillshare to sponsor today's video, so big thank you to them for supporting this channel and Stay tuned to learn more about how you can get Skillshare for free. It took a lot of time and research to discover loopholes to get around the mountain of challenges that came up while I was trying to travel to every country. One of the biggest challenges always being visas. In the end, I realized that one of the most useful things you can do is getting in touch with someone who lives in the certain country that you want to travel to, or at least getting in touch through social media to someone who has had experiences traveling in the same places. Some of the hardest countries to travel to are obvious. It's the countries that are going through the most political and societal instabilities. When a country like Syria or Yemen are at war and experiencing a humanitarian crisis, understandably, tourism becomes their last priority. But it doesn't always mean that it's impossible to go there. If you want to travel to high-risk countries, you have to put in a lot of work. These aren't the kind of places where you can just book a flight and show up the next day without any plans. You need to research and network to talk with people who have had experiences there and listen to locals when they tell you to avoid certain areas. As an American, I would say that obtaining visas to Syria, Iran, and Yemen are some of the most notoriously difficult, and it's the kind of places where you would benefit greatly if you happen to get in touch with a local who works with the government. So what I did in Yemen, for example, which is a very difficult place to get a visa from, I personally got so lucky when I met a Norwegian guy who had a connection on the ground in Yemen that was able to push through the paperwork in person for not only our business visas, but also a media permit because I was traveling there as a professional photographer. Even once my visa was approved, I wasn't able to pick it up in the US, so I had to fly all the way to London first. Flights in and out of the country aren't reliable, so most people drive by land through Oman, which as my friend Drew Binsky can tell you isn't always easy and safe feeling. Visiting Afghanistan was also pretty tough for similar reasons because I had to travel all the way to the UAE only in hopes of getting the Afghani visa and even once I did and I arrived in the country it's surprisingly a very expensive country to travel through because it's also recommended that you hire a guide and a driver to basically be a form of security while you are traveling throughout the country. Traveling to Libya was actually one of the sketchiest ways that I've ever obtained a business visa because when I got to immigration, I had to tell them that I was there to visit an oil and gas company within the country that I don't actually do any business with. Libya is one of the only countries in the world that you cannot visit without hiring a tour company for a lot of money. And you aren't allowed to go anywhere by yourself, which honestly, I wouldn't have really wanted to anyway. The country is very politically unstable and issues can erupt at any time. I even had a friend trapped in Tripoli for a while because there was a military coup trying to take over the only international airport. As a solo female traveler, one of my most important rules to keep me safe while traveling to every country was that I 
I don't go out by myself at night. That meant I spent countless hours, night after night, in my hotel room, and I actually started using Skillshare to make the most out of my time. And yes, I actually signed up for it through a YouTube video just like this, so it feels like I've really come full circle. And that's why I'm so excited that they're sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a online community of lifelong learners where millions of people come together to take the next step in their creative process. For less than $10 a month with an annual subscription, you gain access to thousands of classes on topics like writing, videography, photography, freelancing, and more. I started using Skillshare classes to level up my video editing skills as I launched this YouTube channel. And more recently, Skillshare has been an invaluable resource in helping me write my first book about traveling to every country in the world. One of the classes that has helped me so much is Creative Writing with Impact by Roxanne Gay. This class taught me how to balance looking inwards and outwards to craft powerful stories. So here's the important part. For a limited time, you can use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. It helps the channel out so much when you do that, and more importantly, it gives you knowledge for free. Now, let's get back to the video. I discovered along the way that it's actually some of the least visited countries in the world that are the most expensive to travel through. No place is a better example of this than West and Central Africa. Visas for countries like Mali, Chad, and the Central African Republic can cost upwards of 200 US dollars each. There isn't a lot of demand for flights between these countries, so a lot of flights are very expensive, also costing hundreds of dollars per leg. If you choose to go overland, you can't plan on having any kind of a schedule because the roads are rough and breakdowns in the middle of nowhere are 100% guaranteed. In Equatorial Guinea, you aren't allowed to leave your hotel without having a permit to visit literally anywhere. Thankfully, I was able to get a visa on arrival here with my American passport, but for most other passports, this is actually one of the most exclusive countries in the world. For South Sudan, I needed a formal letter of invitation, but thankfully I was able to get in contact with a hotel that was able to help me with that. But to be honest, it wasn't very much fun for me to adventure around the area surrounding Juba because people typically aren't very friendly or welcoming towards people who carry cameras. That's actually one thing that I found repeating through so many different countries in West and Central Africa is that if you are taking photos and if you happen to get even anything that has to do with the military or the police in the background of one of your photos, you can get in a lot of trouble. Somalia is also a complicated area of the world to travel in for obvious reasons, but there is an unrecognized independent area called Somaliland, which is a completely different and much safer feeling atmosphere. I highly recommend traveling to Hargeisha to see the Las Gil caves, which have these cave drawings on them that are over 5,000 years old. Now let's talk about an area on the complete opposite side of the world. Countries in the South Pacific Ocean may take second place to countries in West and Central Africa in terms of difficulty of travel, but thankfully not because of the visas. They're just so remote. It's really difficult to figure out how logistically to get to all of these places because they're so far out in the middle of the ocean, and that's also what makes flights crazy expensive. This is definitely not a budget-friendly destination, even though it is is incredibly beautiful. The hardest country to visit in this region would definitely be Nauru. 
It's by far one of the least visited countries in the world with an average of less than 200 visitors per year. To get permission to visit the country, you need to email one specific immigration officer that lives on the island where the internet has is horrible and you need to wait for them just to get back to you. I also needed a local sponsor, so it took months of back and forth to finally get permission to go. And then once you get there, there isn't really any kind kind of forms of public transportation, but thankfully the island is only eight square miles, so you can basically walk everywhere. Visiting Pakistan and Venezuela were both so, so challenging for me. They were the most difficult visas I got when traveling to every country, and they both took over six months to obtain. The Turkmenistan visa also took forever to get, and it's also one of the only countries in the world you can't visit without booking a tour with a pre-approved guide company. I honestly think how hard I had to work for months to visit those countries contributed to why they turned out to be some of my most favorite experiences. All the effort made me appreciate it so much more once I got there. Iraq has a crazy expensive visa and you also, similar to Afghanistan, need to hire a driver and a guide, which for me, because all of my travels are self-funded, this was a bit too far out of my budget. But like uh, Somaliland in Somalia, there is an unrecognized independent region called Iraqi Kurdistan, which I was able to travel through and it turned out to be one of my favorite places that I've ever been. The last country I'm going to mention, which is usually the one people are most interested in, is North Korea. I have created a whole video about my experience trying to get in to North Korea as an American since the 2017 travel ban. Please check out that other video for more information about North Korea, which is the only country in the world where it's actually illegal for Americans to travel. It's also one of those countries where you're required to hire a tour company to take you everywhere because no one is allowed to see the country by themselves. In North Korea, all of the tours are insanely expensive. A three-day tour in North Korea will cost you upwards of a thousand US dollars plus flights, and unfortunately, your trip doesn't support the local economy because all of that money goes directly into the pockets of the government. As far as safety traveling there, I'm not personally afraid of traveling to North Korea because I know that I would be so paranoid of coming even remotely close to breaking any kind of laws. Well, that has been a quick overview of all of the hardest countries in the world to travel through from my perspective. I hope you enjoyed hearing about some of these crazy places. Definitely let me know if you would ever travel there yourself. And if you're interested to hear more of my crazy travel stories, you can sign up for my newsletter at LexiLimitless.com slash newsletter to receive a free preview of my upcoming book. You'll get three stories from Nigeria, Yemen and Laos, and I can guarantee they're not something you want to miss out on. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and I will catch you next week.